In this lecture, I'm going to go over some of the basics of t using text in HTML. I've got the most basic HTML document that I could create here. I'm showing you the text in Firefox using Firebug. If you are in Firefox and you open your Tools setting, you may or may not have this installed. You may have to go and install it. It does not install automatically. There's an add-on called Firebug for the web developer, which really helps you to view your code and identify things that are going on. And so I'm using this so that you can see my code. I cannot edit it here, you can just see it, as well as seeing the actual page. I want you to notice that I've broken the page into two parts. One is actual paragraphs. This is written sort of the way that we would write for a magazine or a book. Notice that it is less attractive to the eye on screen than it is in the bottom here where I'm using lists and I'm just using phrases, not complete sentences, to get to the point immediately. While you can write it like this, it's easier for, to read if you are making things bold, organized, shorter, so it's really skimmable. But let's talk about the different code that I'm using. I'm in here and I have no CSS applied. CSS is cascading style sheets. It's used for styling and formatting your HTML pages. All I've got is pure minimal HTML and you're going to show that this, see that this comes up with some errors later. I am using my basic HTML and I like Firebug because it lets me expand or collapse different areas as I'm working with them so that you can see all of the different parts. So we're going to look, just work with one part at a time. When you're writing for HTML, the first thing that you have to do is declare a doc type. I'm using HTML5, which is not a, an official standard yet, though the common components are supported by most browsers and have been for several versions. So I'm moving into HTML5 personally. I actually need to refresh this because I made a change in there. Now it's accurately reflecting this page. The first line of the real HTML code is just to declare it as an HTML document. I'm also declaring the language as English. Every opening tag, which will appear between two brackets with some additional properties at times, will have a closing tag as well. So this is the start and the end of my HTML document. Inside of the HTML document, you will usually have a head section, and that should at minimum include a title. My title is Basic HTML5 Coding and that shows up here on the tab for my web page. I then have a body section. In it I have multiple portions. In this one I've kept it simple. I have a header section right here. This page demonstrates the basic tags for working with text and that's inside an H1 tag. There are six levels of H1 tags, or of H tags, H1 through H6. The H tags indicate importance. There's also some formatting attached to them, and you can control that through cascading style sheets as well. Right now you're seeing the default formatting. I also like when I'm using Firebug that whatever I highlight here shows up at the top of the page, so you know exactly where it's at. Often your header will include photos, logos, things like that. Now I have a division tag. A div tag breaks the page into logical sections. And in my div I have a heading and three logical paragraphs. You'll notice that any place that I have opening and closing paragraph tags, as I highlighted, that the blue area is my actual content. Let me show you something else here. You'll ha see the content is in the center, then I have padding, which is between the content and where the border would go, and outside of that I have the margin, and those all together make up the space between my content and the next level of content. So the yellow areas are showing the buffer area, and the blue area is showing where my content is. Each paragraph will automatically leave a blank line between it and the next paragraph. If you don't want a blank line, you can put in a break statement. Here I have the break statement, which automatically will start you onto a new line without a blank line in between. And notice when you're using a paragraph tag, if I 
reflow, I accidentally shut it, let's see, if I reflow my browser, the text automatically reflows. But where I have my break line right after the word print there, it always takes the next line to the next line of logical line without putting a space in between it. So that's the difference between a break and a paragraph tag. Sometimes to break up areas of text, you use something called a horizontal rule. This horizontal rule is going all the way across the page, and it's just a line that's drawn there. You can also define the width, the color, and the percentage of the page that it takes up. You'll see that I move into a H and H3 tag, and with each of my H tags, this is H1, H2, H3, they get a little smaller. This area is easier to read. I'm using a bulleted list, which is also considered an unordered list, and I'm also using an ordered list or a numbered list. To have an unordered bulleted list, you'll see that you start it with a UL, unordered list, and then each item is an LI, list item. I've embedded further, to, further pr um, programming code here, strong, the browser's interpreting is bold, but it makes a difference for readers browsers for the blind, and then emphasis is showing up as italic. You could simply make them bold and italic. That's frowned upon. Strong and emphasis will impact how browsers for the blind read things, whereas bold and italic would be ignored by a browser for the blind. So you can make emphasis of your text using those. I'm into an H4 level here, again getting smaller but still bold, and this is an ordered list, OL, then each list item is LI, and you can see that I stress when you're making a website, you plan, you wireframe, you test, you storyboard, you test, you code, you test, what you should be getting out of this is you should test frequently. And so that ends the body of my HTML page. So that is just some of the basic text formatting and the most basic level of HTML that you would write. Now there are a couple of other things I should have included, which I'll include in the next version, but I want to show you where you can go to validate to make sure you're coding things so that it will work on browsers that are supporting modern standards. This is the W3C page, validator.w3c.org. You can validate by a URL, put the address in, you can validate by file upload, where you can browse and find a file on your computer, upload it and check it, or you can validate by direct input, which is what I've done here. I copied and pasted my code into here, and now I can check to make sure that I don't have any errors. You'll see that it passed, but I have three warnings. I'll fix those in the next program that I write. I left out things that will work, but it's frowned upon to leave them out. Here are the notes. This is an HTML5 conformance checker. This is considered experimental because HTML5 is not officially supported yet. Even though most browsers are, su are supporting the basic HTML5, it is not the official standard. I have not declared character encoding. I will do that in the next one. And I have not said what sort of input mode that I'm using. In the next one, I'll do that. So I'll show you how you would do that. So I have three warnings, which means it will generally work. The page should load and render properly in any modern browser. It's a good idea to validate your pages to make sure that you're using the HTML code properly.